20 seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence starts. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Neil Armstrong reporting the rolling pitch program, which puts Apollo 11 on a proper heading. Plus 30 seconds. Altitude's two miles. Oh, 11 Houston, you're good at one minute. Downrange, one mile. Altitude, three, four miles now. Velocity, 2,195 feet per second. Arguably the greatest achievement in the history of mankind, many of the technologies common in daily life today came from the immense effort to put a man onto the lunar surface 50 years ago. In fact, the space program as we know it today actually began 12 years prior to the mission that put two men on the moon. On October 4, 1957, the Soviet Union launched Sputnik 1 the first man-made satellite. This incredible feat of engineering sparked the rapid development of space propulsion and satellite technology. On April 12, 1961, Vostok 1 carried the first man, Yuri Gagarin, into space. And one year later, on July 10, 1962, Telstar, the first commercial satellite, was put into orbit by the U.S. A space race quickly ensued, which culminated with the moon landings. The quest for enough thrust to land a man on the moon led to the building of vehicles powerful enough to launch payloads to heights of 21 to 22,000 miles and higher above the Earth's surface. At such altitudes, a satellite's orbital speed can match the planet's rotation, achieving geosynchronous orbit. Geosynchronous satellites are primarily responsible for communications, providing both internet connectivity and TV programming. Currently, there are approximately 2,200 satellites orbiting the Earth. Another major development of the space program is miniaturization. Space missions have very strict limitations on how big and how heavy their equipment can be because so much energy is required to lift it off and achieve orbit. These limits force the space industry to make smaller and lighter versions of almost everything. Manned missions required more complex systems than earlier unmanned ones. In 1951, the Universal Automatic Computer was capable of 1,905 instructions per second. The Saturn V's guidance system could perform about 12,000. 
In comparison, modern handheld devices perform instructions 120 million times faster than the guidance system on the Apollo 11 mission. The need to miniaturize computers for space exploration motivated an entire industry to design better, smaller, faster and more efficient computers. Getting to space has allowed people to turn their research efforts toward Earth. In August 1959, the unmanned satellite Explorer 6 took the first crude photos of Earth from space on a mission researching the upper atmosphere in preparation for the Apollo program. Almost a decade later, the crew of Apollo 8 took the famous Earthrise picture of the Earth rising over the lunar landscape. This image helped people understand our planet as a unique shared world and boosted the environmental movement. People have been taking pictures of Earth from space ever since. Views of Earth from space guide people both globally and locally. What started in the early 1960s as a U.S. Navy satellite system to track its Polaris submarines to within 600 feet has blossomed into the global positioning system, providing location services worldwide. But this only just scratches the surface of the immense list of inventions and innovations the space program has brought to us. We can only imagine what innovations will come from the effort to send people to other planets and how it will affect Earthlings 50 years from now. But all of the amazing technologies and incredible achievements of the Apollo missions would not have been possible without the lessons learned during the development of one of the most feared weapons of war, the V-2 rocket developed by a team of German scientists led by Werner von Braun. Von Braun was a German and later American aerospace engineer and space architect. He was the leading figure in the development of rocket technology in Germany and a pioneer of rocket and space technology in the United States. Von Braun was awarded his Doctorate of Physics in Aerospace Engineering on July 27, 1934, from the University of Berlin, for a thesis entitled About Combustion Tests. However, this thesis was only the public part of Von Braun's work. His actual full thesis was kept classified by the German Army and was not published until 1960. By the end of 1934, his group had successfully launched two liquid-fueled rockets that rose to heights of 2.2 and 3.5 kilometers. At the time, Germany was highly interested in American physicist Robert H. Goddard's research. Before 1939, German research scientists occasionally contacted Goddard directly with technical questions. Von Braun used Goddard's plans from various journals and incorporated them into the building of the aggregate series of rockets. Later, Von Braun would comment, I have very deep and sincere regret for the victims of the V-2 rockets, but there were victims on both sides. A war is a war, and when my country is at war, my duty is to help it win that war. Only military development was allowed, and to this end, a large facility was erected at the village of Penamunde in northern Germany, on the Baltic Sea, with von Braun as technical director. The Penamunde group developed liquid-fueled rocket engines for aircraft and jet-assisted takeoffs. They also developed the long-range A-4 ballistic missile and the supersonic Wasserfall anti-aircraft missile. On December 22, 1942, Adolf Hitler ordered the production of the A-4 as a vengeance weapon, and the Penamindi group developed it to target London. Following von Braun's July 7, 1943 presentation of a color movie showing an A-4 taking off, Hitler was so enthusiastic that he personally made von Braun a professor shortly thereafter. 
In Germany at this time, this was an exceptional promotion for an engineer who was only 31 years old. By that time, the British and Soviet intelligence agencies were aware of the rocket program and von Braun's team at Penamunde, based on the intelligence provided by the Polish underground home army. Over the nights of August 17th and 18th, 1943, RAF Bomber Command's Operation Hydra dispatched raids on Penamunde camp consisting of 596 aircraft and dropped 1,800 tons of explosives. The facility was salvaged and most of the engineering team remained unharmed. The first combat V-2 was launched towards England on September 7, 1944. The German V-2 rocket was the world's first large-scale liquid propellant rocket vehicle, the first long-range ballistic missile, and the ancestor of today's large rockets and launch vehicles. Called the A-4 by German Army Ordnance, the rocket was dubbed V-2 or Vengeance Weapon 2 by the Nazi Propaganda Ministry when its existence was publicly announced in November 1944. Launched from mobile platforms, the missile had a maximum range of about 320 kilometers, 200 miles, and a one-ton warhead. At least 10,000 concentration camp workers died in the process of manufacturing it. Though more than 3,000 V-2s were launched, more people were killed building the rocket than those hit by it. The V-2 was not a successful weapon for Germany. However, it marked a breakthrough in technology that propelled the Soviet Union and the US into an arms race and into a space race, and serves as a powerful example of the pain of progress.